CataractCoach.com by manual phaco technique. Are there advantages to separating the infusion from the aspiration? And our guest surgeon is Dr. Sergio from France. So here's the eye. We're going to show you the whole video at three times normal speed so we can get to it. Making the first incision there with a the keratome, and then another incision opposite with the same keratome. Now, these incisions are relatively small, probably about two millimeters in diameter. And now injecting the viscoelastic, and we'll do the capsular axis. Now, using the bimanual technique means that there's a separation of the infusion from the aspiration of the phaco. Now, many people are used to doing bimanual surgery already for cortex removal, irrigation aspiration. Vitrectomy is typically done in a bimanual approach and not coaxial. So why do we still do phaco with a coaxial approach? And this was the thinking about 15, 16 years ago when bimanual phaco started to become popular. Believe it or not, this technique was quite popular in the U.S. and around the world for quite a few years back in the mid-2000s. Now, one of the challenges, of course, is with a smaller incision, you've got smaller fluid flow. Because remember, Poisson's equation. And so it's related to the size of the tubing. So there's in the right hand the phaco tip, and the left hand is the infusion. And people even made choppers that had infusion on them. So like an infusion cannula without a chopper tip on it. But in this technique, a groove is going to be made down the middle here, and you're going to do essentially a central groove, split the nucleus, and then remove it. Now look at the phaco needle. There's no sleeve on it. Well, that means that metal needle is in direct contact with the corneal incision. So a couple things are important here. You need to have phaco power modulation so you don't build up too much heat and you don't cause a wound burn. And you also need to have a relatively leaky incision so the, the exiting balanced salt solution that goes around the phaco needle helps to cool it down. And you also must float within the incision using that bare needle. So again, this technique in the 15 years ago when it was popular, one of the challenges was the amount of infusion that you could achieve. And so surgeons had to use a lower degree of aspiration flow rate because they weren't able to get enough inflow of fluid into the eye at the time of surgery. And so they had very, very high bottle heights. This was the time before uh, most machines had pressurized infusion. So this does work well, and it does have some advantages, but it does have a little bit of a learning curve. And that learning curve is you have to be very careful not to damage the cornea with the phaco tip, that bare phaco tip. And if you don't understand about phaco power modulations, going to a burst mode or a pulse mode, changing the duty cycle to less than 50%, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you better go to cataractcoach.com and read our 10-part series about phaco fundamentals. That's very important. And I even show you a trick of testing the phaco tip to ensure that heat won't build up in order to have a safe surgery. Now, you also may need to use a different instrument. If you're going to use a chopper, it has to be an irrigating chopper. In this case, our surgeon has just did a, a stop and chop, basically, dividing the nucleus into one groove down the middle and then splitting it manually. Now, with the infusion staying inside the eye of the left hand, the right hand gets the uh, smooth aspirator here to remove the cortex. And so this part you've seen, of course, is bimanual cortex removal. Now, with the smaller incisions, you may have limited choices in terms of IOLs. So most surgeons use IOLs that go through incisions of somewhere around 2.5 to maybe 2.8 millimeters wide. And you can put those same lenses through slightly smaller incisions if you use a wound assist technique. There are a couple lenses available that do go through even tinier incisions of sub two millimeters, but those are not as commonly used. So here we go, nice and empty caps or bag, looks pretty clean, here comes the viscoelastic. Let's watch the lens insertion technique here. So a little bit extra viscoelastic to prevent that iris from prolapsing. Look, the incision was enlarged. So that begs the question, if you're going to enlarge the incision anyway, why not just do coaxial phaco? 
And then you can use any second instrument you want because the infusion is paired or with the coaxial phaco probe. And so that's kind of where it all ended up. And in the U.S. now, by manual phaco is very rarely done. And same with around the world. Most people now do coaxial, but I thought I'd need to show you the video. I know you love the YouTube videos, but check out the website, cataractcoach.com. A lot easier to navigate. We have a complete list of articles and videos. You can go and check on any of these categories and explore more. You can also search. There's a search engine that's really effective. You can see Gore-Tex lenses like this. And finally, you can look up about me. There's a link that has my surgical instruments. Now you don't even have to ask me. You can just find out for yourself what's the name of those forceps.